There we go. And now Jessica Boyce. Hi, uh, my name is Jessica Boyce, and I will be talking with you today about vertebrate data in the Neotoma Paleoecology Database. I want to start by showing a map of uh, that displays the geographic scope and bias within the vertebrate data. Um, you can see all the sites uh, within the database that have at least some vertebrate, uh, vertebrate data recorded at them. Um, and you will notice quite obviously that most of the data currently in Neotoma are in, uh, stemming from sites in North America. Um, this stems from the legacy of uh, FONMAP. So FONMAP was one of the original constituent databases within Neotoma um, and it was, uh, pulled together, compiled as part of a research project focusing on uh, patterns and diversity across mammals of North America. And so that legacy invertebrate data uh, still persists today. Overall, um, the vertebrate data have uh, are found across three primary constituent databases. Uh, FONMAP, which I just mentioned, um, that was originally led by Russ Graham, who is the former lead steward for vertebrate data. Um, when Russ retired, I took over for him. Um, there's a number of sites in Pavela, and we'll talk about them more in the future uh, in a few slides, um, but Pavela is uh, led um, by Joaquin Arroyo Cabrales and myself are both the lead stewards. And we've been actively uploading data over the last year um, together with uh, uh, Deborah Veronea Espinosa Martinez, a graduate student working with Joaquin and Nicola Cullen, who's a, a data steward for the vertebrates um, as well as pollen and other, um, other data types. Um, and then the third uh, constituent database that has vertebrate data is the Alaskan Archaeofaunas database, um, and Mike Etnier serves as the lead steward for that one. Um, there's a few other databases out there um, that are on hold that have been planned for ingest but are not yet ingested into the database. So the Myomap database, um, currently Edward Davis is serving as lead steward for that. Um, that's vertebrate data from North America primarily, but from the Miocene. And then the Antigua database, um, uh, Edward's also involved in that. I have uh, all those files on my computer waiting for ingest. Um, and uh, there's a number of uh, vertebrate sites in other constituent databases, just in Neotoma General and the Midden database, and then vertebrate data really formed the foundation for the faunal isotope database. Um, besides uh, the folks that are pictured here, um, over the last year, um, there have been contributions by, by others, by Mel Pardee, um, Chris Wijda, and then um, uh, Val Syverson is a postdoc working with me on, on some chronology aspects of the database. And I wanted to clarify here that um, the, the data type is vertebrate data, but for the most part, the majority of data um, that are in Neotoma right now are coming from mammals. So there are um, other vertebrate data scattered in there, but uh, the vast majority of data are focused on mammals. Okay, so um, here's a summary of the uh, number of sites, uh, samples, and taxa um, for sort of the whole data volume as well as uploads over the last year. And you can see the strong dominance by FONMAP, about 4,400 sites. Um, there's a smattering of Alaskan archaeofauna sites, and then a number of sites uh, in Pavela. Um, over the last year, um, we've added a few to FONMAP, but we've really focused on Pavela. You can see we uploaded a bunch of new taxa and then have slowly been working on the site uploads. Um, I don't list the numbers here for Antigua and Myomap. Um, Antigua uh, was not able to be, it's on hold because of the lack of embargo manager, but it has about 70 sites from South America. And then Myomap is on hold um, due to the lack of lithostratigraphic units, and it has a whole number of sites there. Um, over the last year, a uh, few years, I would say, um, we've been working on a few things. Um, the 
most active project is this Padella database ingest led by Joaquin and I um, uh, with uh, substantial support um, and work done by uh, Deborah and Nicola. Um, Pavela was in a database format already, the Mexican Quaternary Mammals Database. Um, but as we were working through it, we realized there was some key uh, info or indices that were not available in the old database format, um, primarily having to do with keeping track of analysis units across different database tables. Um, and so uh, after banging our heads against the wall, we decided we needed to really go back to the drawing board and, and and go back to the literature and potentially just create the site files by scratch, site by site. Um, so in order to do this, we created a priority list of sites for upload. Um, we added all the new taxa that we needed to Neotoma, gathered the site literature, and then have been working on, on ticking off those priority sites. So about 14, probably a few more um, this week um, that we'll add. Um, Another very sort of recent or ongoing effort is the FONMAP uh, chronology revision. This is uh, in support of a research project um, led by myself and a postdoc, Val Cyberson, in collaboration with researchers at Ohio State. Um, and, uh, you know, FONMAP chronologies were last um, really looked at in the 90s. Um, and a lot of them, most of them are still in radiocarbon years before present. And so we really are trying to go back, um, add new data when we can, um, and update all chronologies in the FONMAP uh, database. Um, and then a number of years ago, uh, in the midst of COVID, we had a virtual vertebrate hackathon. Um, and this was attended by a number of, of vertebrate researchers. and. One of the things that we did was develop uh, example scenarios for data analysis in R um, that we use then as the foundation for our vignettes. And so Socorro Dominguez has been really been working on um, developing those R vignettes in tandem with the work that her and Simon have been doing on the new R package. So our overall goal right now is to make the science easier. Um, and, you know, I think that we do this in a couple of ways. Um, first, it's by broadening the geographic and taxonomic scope of the data. I guess that's maybe not making it easier, but making the science broader and more applicable. Um, in terms of making it easier, I think we really need to, that's uh, where the sort of chronology revision effort comes into play. Um, and, um, you know, really trying to uh, create new uh, chronologies um, and to document sort of exactly um, what is going into those chronologies. Um, on the stewarding side, um, you know, in order to you know add new data to broaden the geographic scope um, in terms of other chronologies, I think we really need to think about changing the upload process, which this is quite. Uh, Part of our barrier. And um, overall, improving process and documentation. So, as a group coming together and thinking about standards that we want to apply across um, as many vertebrate sites as we can needed to agents, um, the you know, biostratigraphic and event agents, and um, really do a big taxonomy revision. Um, and I'll get into a few of these more on the next slide. Um, and the next slide is sort of focusing on our needs and wants. Um, you know, one big need that's been outstanding for a number of years is an embargo manager. So this would support the Antigua database, um, but I think also other databases across other proxy types. Um, I think an embargo manager also supports pair data principles, and I'll um, talk about those pair data principles in a talk on Thursday. Um, an embargo manager was first proposed in the 2015 geomathematics grant, and we worked on the governance and policy and getting an embargo manager and uh, policy in place, and we made the first steps towards IT implementation, um, but it has not yet sort of risen to that, that highest priority. Um, I think we need better specimen support. It's still incredibly buggy and unstable for specimens. Um, um, in addition, it's also very labor intensive. And then finally, I just have a few more seconds to squeeze in here, but um, I'm not sure exactly the systems, but I would like to have more transparency in process. So as we revise 
the taxonomy as we update data or errors that we see. Um, I would like to have a logging system in place so that we can note the changes, why revisions were made, how they were decided upon, who made a revision. I think some of this is stored in internal log files, but it's then not visible to users downstream and how a site has changed over time. Um, and so this also, I think, applies, um, the same principle applies to taxonomic names. So, um, you know, there's a number of times when there's, um, you know, the original IDs might be different than the name that is, is actually stored finally. And so showing um, both of those and making it easy to find that, I think would be helpful. Okay, that's it. If you have questions, you can email or Slack me, and I look forward to the conversation throughout the rest of the um, symposium. All right. Cool. Uh, okay. Hi. Uh, oh. My name is. Stop that. Uh, Bob, do we have your presentation? Is Bob on? Uh, yeah. Can I just share my screen? Is that possible? Uh, sure. Okay. Just a second. Uh, when you share your screen, let me. Oh, I'm still recording. Hang on. 